116th episode of the Cars Cast movie cast. Uh, we're going to make it to 200, baby. We're going to make it. Well, that's a bit of a ways away, but <laughs> I don't know why you said that this episode. <laughs> but, um, uh, chili crab is a dish from which country? Ch- chili crab. So I'm thinking like crab means it's a country that's near the ocean. Um and then chili is is obviously quite is is spicy, so it's a country that's near the ocean that likes spicy things. Yeah. So I'm gonna go Thailand. <sighs> close, close. But it, it was Singapore actually. But that was mm. interesting. Getting the logic behind your yeah your answers. It was, it was you know the most basic logic you yeah. could get. Step into I'm like the- okay, crab. <laughs> So you can get crab, them here, chili. and you need the water for crabs. <laughs> <laughs> Got to step into the mind of Jeff there, and it was, it was so yeah. Um, I'm thinking now. Hear me out. I'm thinking we just cut the intro, and by the intro, I mean the part where I say hello, welcome to the blank episode of the car, because it's like, you know. I, th- yeah. I think we should just start the episodes with me asking you a question. You know what like I mean? Like a cold open. Cold open, yeah. Instead of, because it's like they can read. They know what, what episode if, it is. What if the question is always, Jeff, what episode is this? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't think you'd get it right most of the time. I don't know I how probably well wouldn't. you're I would have <laughs> absolutely not gotten it right today. Do you, do you remember what I said or sh- should I... What, what 116, episode? right? Yep. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We should have watched like 16 candles or something for our 160. We should all, our, <laughs> our movie should always have something to do with the number of episodes we're at. Now, that you would know? have been a much better premise if we started doing that because it's yeah. a lot easier to find it's, movies. It's a little for, like, hard to first pick up on the 20 numbers. 16. <laughs> yeah, like, like yeah. 50 first dates would have been good for the 50th episode. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah 12 monkeys that's another good one yeah seven seven 21 the that casino movie yeah uh yeah oceans 11 ocean we could have just done oceans 11 12 and 13 right. for that that would have been a great you know? like sequence to do yeah 40 year old virgin and, and i think and we did do quick, that though yeah what you know what they have you know what they have in the ocean crabs crabs yep <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, well, I, I just discovered this other podcast. I think it's like a very popular podcast, but it's called The First Podcast or something, where every episode is the first episode of a different podcast. Like, they, oh, they start idea. off we a new podcast. Yeah, I was like, that's a really fun idea. Um, but anyways, that's not this podcast. If no, it's not. No, we're, you're listening to the Cars Cast movie cast. No, this is the, the 116th The 116th episode of the Cars Cast. <laughs> Which we established. Yeah. Jeff, wait, can I... Actually, you know, never mind. I'm not going to ask this question. <laughs> um, you do that a lot, and I think <laughs> it's probably very frustrating for the listener experience. It's very... I do that a lot in real life, too. Uh, like, yeah. my, I do, I just do that with my friends. And it's usually now, when I want to say something that I'm going to gr- regret saying, but it... I want to yeah. say, your friends, and I've been part of this group, almost always coax the question out of you oh yeah well the (laughs) the strategy behind this is that when you say that it makes it so if i end up saying the thing which i'm already Mm -hmm. hesitant about saying if it goes wrong it's the per it's the other person's fault for wanting to know it you know i'm like you're the reason that's that came out of my mouth so yeah that's that's actually kind of (laughs) ingenious yeah yeah a lot of (laughs) thoughts gone into it Um, now um I've wanted to bring this up since we started recording. Okay. Today or the just piano. The piano. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a real piano. Real quick, you are in a new apartment. Your new apartment. Yeah, yeah. I guess we yeah, we talked for a while so I just like I <laughs> have already feel yeah. used to it, but So how do you like it? Oh, I love it. It's it is the first time since I want to say like middle school that my bedroom has been just a bedroom, not like there's no desk in there to work on. It's just my bed. 
and a dresser. Now, for a second, I thought you were going to say this is the first time since middle school that I lived alone. And then oh. I was going to have a lot of other questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is not what you said. No, that's not what I like. said. That would be interesting, though. I am living alone, though. Like, that's, another, that's another part of this, um, which, you know... You, you you gave me a lot of pep talk before this happened because uh, mm-hmm. I know you lived alone for a while. Yeah. Uh, I have a lot of friends who've lived alone. And it's like, yeah, it, it was definitely weird for the first like two days. Still is a little weird sometimes. The days go by mm. really slow, which, okay, let me just say, it's not that drastically different from my living situation a week ago where I had three roommates. Because even though I had three roommates, I would stay in my room a lot just because I was like working. Like, it's not like we hung out every day. But I'm just like right. Something about being in but, like an empty apartment is very weird. Yeah, it, it's nice though when you are working because then you don't feel like you have to be locked in your room. Yeah, for people yeah. to like not bother you. Exactly. You can exactly. be like, okay, I'm still working, but I can take a quick break in the living room and just be like, yep. still thinking about the thing I'm working on. Yeah, that's the thing. I have all these different spaces I could be doing what I want to do, which is yeah, a really cool feeling. The office, it's unfortunate that this is where most of the internet will see me because the office is the least developed space as of now. All I have is that piano that isn't mine. Um, The the last tenant left it in here, uh, and they were supposed to move it out today, but no one came. So, yeah. I think it's yours now, then. It has to be mine. When I was moving in, I I hired a mover team, and there were three guys, and they were all moving, and then... They all stopped at some point, and then I heard piano, and then I walked into this room, and all three of them are sitting at the piano, like, playing a song, (laughs) and I was like, guys, that's not even... They're like, is this yours? I'm like, you're the one that moved the stuff. (laughs) You would have known if that was mine. (laughs) They're like, like, you would have been moving it. (laughs) One of them was playing... Did you move it in? Yeah. One of them was playing this really, like, intricate piece, and I was like, do you play piano? And he was like, "Ah," you know, and I was like, oh... Hidden. Dude, that's the thing with people who are really good at instruments. They know is yeah. they always undersell how good they are. Yeah, that is so true. If someone's like, if someone's like, yeah, I play guitar, that means they're very mediocre. But if someone's like, yeah, I play a little bit, mm-hmm. they're, then uh, they're like an expert. Yeah, they're very humble people. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's because like you, if you're like a really good at playing an instrument, like you, it means you've played that instrument a lot, which means you've probably played a lot of shitty stuff. So I, I feel like you, I don't know where this logic is going. <laughs> um, it's like, yeah, you played a lot, you but a you lot. used to suck. Yeah, you <laughs> suck and now you're better, but um, yeah. Can you, I think, uh, can you play something? Yeah, yeah. Let me try and get this as close as I can. Wow, I didn't know Karsten could play the piano like that. Yeah, it's a little hidden talent. Um been practicing for a while yeah this actually is your piano and you were pretending it wasn't so people yeah no i'm one of those humble musicians that we were talking about i don't you know i don't <laughs> talk about it much but <laughs> i dabble um i will say i have one funny moving story uh and it's sort of related but i uh i went to ikea as you do when you're kind of you know when you move when you're moving when you're in your like either teens or 20s and like you're either moving into a dorm or an apartment in your 20s you go to ikea you go to ikea and honestly ikea has amazing things um i have a light setup that i won't spoil until it's set up but um i uh i was on my way back and i'm on i-90 which is the biggest highway i think in chicago um it's yeah there's the two that like one goes like north south and one goes like east west it's like six lanes or some shit oh yeah there's a big sign that's like for an exit or some shit, and I see a guy up against the sign. Um, don't see his arms, but I see his legs kind of spread. And I was like, "Is he? Is he peeing?" And as soon as we pass, I see a gi- he. I see a giant dick. Um, a giant, <laughs> a giant dick on I ninety, <laughs> like peeing. A thick stream. I was like, I. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So here's the thing. 
Um, I-90 and the part you're talking about literally just runs next to Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Now, any exit that person could have taken would have led them to be within right two minutes there. of stopping somewhere to go to a bathroom. Yep. Literally any of the exits. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I not only witnessed a penis <laughs> on I-90... But I went to someone who had, like, an emergency. Like, that was yeah. someone who had to go. <laughs> it's just, like, to park and then walk up this hill. It's Because it's, like, it's one of those highways where it's, like, it's a highway and then there's, like, the steep hill up. It's, like, he had to work for it. And it was, like, rush yeah. hour traffic. And I'm, like, sir. It was, yeah. Um, it was just really uh, jarring to see that. I did not expect to see a, a penis on, uh-huh. the, on I-90. the busiest highway in the city. Um, and I love it because it's like kind of on the outskirts of the city, too. It was like that midway point, kind of a little past O'Hare. So it's like that was a lot of people's introduction to Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> like, people driving in, they're like, oh. Um, <laughs> that's Chicago for that's you. That's Chicago. Now, like Windy City. Right. Uh, did I ever tell you about my experience on the l like the week before locked it like everything shut down before no, the virus no. <laughs> I would okay love to hear so this I, i'm on i'm on the l mm-hmm. and there's this guy who's clearly very intoxicated yeah um that's the l yeah and he asked me very politely uh which direction the train's going and that's a and anyone who takes the L knows it's very hard to not know that information. First of all, it's pretty much it's everywhere you look everywhere. on the train, and also you had to get on the train where it tells you where the yeah. ultimate stop of that train is. Yeah. Um, so I I told the person right I told this guy where it was and he said thank you and then he got up, walked to the corner of the train and just peed. <laughs> probably eight feet from me oh my god just like right on the metal walls of the train <laughs> in the corner <laughs> was this a uh what what line was this was it the red this it was it the red the red famously always smells like piss <laughs> i so, think it might have been the red line you witnessed the root of one of those incidents yeah it was either the red line or the blue line that adds up that tracks yeah it's yeah. I. It's always one of those two, because yeah, like I think it. I think it was the red. I think I transferred blue to red. Yeah, yeah. There is the the hallway, and this has been memed on Twitter a lot. The the whatever tunnel yes. you get from the yes. red to the blue. It's like the downtown. Jackson Tunnel. Yeah, it's one of the filthiest places on the planet. Yeah, <laughs> it's so disgusting. I know you go down there and just like the smell is like nothing you've ever smelled it's before. Insane. It's insane. Where you. You instantly have this realization. I should not be inhaling <laughs> while I'm down here. Yeah. <laughs> you just try to hold your breath, right? Like, yeah. I, I do that. I literally hold my breath yeah. when I walk down that tunnel. It's just such a long tunnel, too. It's like it fucking, it's just, it feels like it never ends. It's so funny. Yeah. Dude, so imagine if there's like a bomb issue, like in Chicago, like they're like dropping bombs on us, and that's where you have to shelter. <laughs> Everybody's like, you know what? I'll just take the bombs. I'll take the bombs. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, that is so... Yeah, everyone... I feel like everyone that's lived in Chicago knows about that tunnel. It's just god-awful. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Uh, that that was, for the record, the only moving story I had, though. And it had nothing to do with moving. It was just uh, yeah. that. But you're, you're liking the new place. I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'll visit next time I'm in town. Yeah, and you can you could sleep on my couch. I could sleep on the yeah. couch. I asked you on Twitter you just so publicly hard for ask you to say no. <laughs> <laughs> if I you can sleep on my couch. Um, oh, wait, there was some news also. Um, oh yeah, it's so very brief. One news. Uh, I'm ready. Uh, Will Smith. I, I love news. Is releasing a memoir. Um, it, he said I've been working on it for the past two years and it is finally ready. And the name of the memoir is Will. Um, that's that. I mean, it, the title works because it's also a word that it is, is uh, like yeah. willpower. There's where it's like, like a lot of layers. will. Yeah, 
Yeah, so honestly, if Jeff meant something inspiring, I would use that as the title of my memoir as well. <laughs> just Jeff. But it, it doesn't. But Jeff yeah, is it just doesn't. Jeff, yeah. Um, yeah. I realize... Like, th- Carson doesn't work either. Yeah, no. Carson, they're just like, oh, it's that guy. Um, yeah. I will say, I think... <laughs> I will say. Uh, I think Will... <laughs> like, when you hear about the celebrity Will, I think everybody knows it's Will Smith. Like, is Will Smith the uh, most famous Will? Probably, but there's like Will Arnett. That is true. Is is another big one. Yeah. Uh, Will Forte. Will Forte. Forte's We're not just talking famous, about like yeah. comedians, yeah. actor comedians. That's what I'm saying. Like Will is like the superstar. Yeah, Will Smith Will. is for sure. Oh, the superstar. Will Ferrell. I forgot. Oh, about right, right. Will Ferrell. Yeah. Uh, Why are so many like comedic actors named Will? I know, because technically Will Smith is also a comedic actor. He's he started in in a way comedy, Fresh Prince. Yeah, yeah. That's um, I don't know. That that's the best news I could find. Was, <laughs> yeah. Now re- I up. would be interested in hearing the the section that's about the film Wild Wild West. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen that I have not film? Seen Wild. I Wild saw that West. in theaters. It was this like huge budget comedy that just like was really bad. Yeah. But when you're a kid, you still like it because mm-hmm. it's like. It's bad in that it's stupid. Yeah. It's it's but it's still entertaining enough for a small child. Right, right. Which is So I still I don't know, yeah. It's you know did what it had to do. It yeah, it's uh you know what? I'm, I don't think it's worth talking about any more yeah. than about ten <laughs> seconds for that movie. It's, we it's not that good. I was gonna say, should we talk about it in another episode or I no. guess we're gonna yeah. No. Um cool, cool. Well that does it for the news. Um We'll we'll get in. <laughs> that, I'm just imagining someone like coming to this podcast for news, and that's the one item that Will Smith has a biography or memoir that he's writing. This like that's the, the only news. n- newsworthy yeah. thing that happened. It drops November 9th, by the way. Um, for anyone that's on the edge of their seats waiting for it, I I actually very much respect you for giving the date it's being released. Because if we're gonna tell them about, it, that yeah, as news, we might as well. We should drop the date. Yep, yep. Yeah. No, we really, like, touched on the bare minimum. (laughs) Yeah. This is why we're not a news podcast. (laughs) But we'll do it anyways. Um, Okay, we we should do the movie now. Um, We should. uh, This week, Jeff and I... Well, speaking of uh, Newsies, which is a musical, um, today... (laughs) today, Yeah, sure. I'll I'll go there with you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Today we're talking about uh, another musical called In the Heights. Um, it's another. It's a Lin Manuel joint. Well, he didn't direct it, but he, you know, is he like wrote it or something? It was like a, originally a musical by him. Yeah. Um, that was like a stage production, uh, but now it's a movie before Hamilton. Before Hamilton, yeah. And the synopsis reads: uh, In Washington. Heights, New York. The scent of warm coffee hangs in the air just outside the 181st su- Street subway stop, where a kaleidoscope of dreams rallies uh, a vibrant and tight knit community. At the intersection of it all is a likable and magnetic bodega owner who hopes, imagines, and sings about a better life. That's <laughs> actually really nice that the scent outside of the 181st street subway stop is uh, the scent of warren coffee because the jackson red line stop (laughs) is just piss (laughs) no one ever talks about that yeah no one makes a musical about the jackson red line (laughs) i I just make my musical called the loop and it's like the, the synopsis says in Chicago, Illinois, the scent of warm piss, piss. hangs in the air. <laughs> Just outside, outside of the Jackson, Jackson Red, Red Line. Line stop. Where a kaleidoscope of different fluids. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, that, and it's directed by John M. Chu, who did, uh, I think, Crazy Rich Asians, I think. Um I don't think I've seen any other John M. Chu pictures, but yeah. Anyways. Yeah, that's, uh, yes, Crazy Rich Agents and then G.I. Joe Retaliation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and, uh, Now You See Me 2. <laughs> There's a Now You See Me 2? Yeah, also, apparently, um, 
Justin. There's actually apparently in development now. You see me three. Oh, so we see um, him a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we're talking about we're talking about in the heights. In the heights. Uh, Jeff, I think this is our first musical. Am I wrong? Uh, no, you are. You are wrong. We watched Grease. We did watch Grease, <laughs> which, which I don't think either of us liked. To be honest, no. A, a, I will say. The people in this film, the actors, definitely are um, more cast to the age they actually are. Oh, yeah. No casting issues here. Well, that's yeah. actually well, that's, very yeah. false. <laughs> that is actually <laughs> the main controversy yeah. surrounding this film. <laughs> it's the only controversy. <laughs> yeah. Um, the only controversy, yeah. I actually haven't like done... I, I know enough to know that what I said was just false, but I actually am not entirely caught up on the controversy of In the Heights. If anything, that's yeah. the news of the week, actually. Um, <laughs> that would have been just a lot better of a maybe, segue. Maybe um, Will Smith wrote about it in his memoir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the main topics he hits. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but In the Heights, I listen... There was, like, so much hype for this film because they were, like... Mm -hmm. I think they've said this, like, five separate times, but they were, like, this is the movie that's going to bring back audiences to theaters. It's, like, the the hit of the summer. Um, and first of all, it's flopping. Uh, and that's because it's on HBO Max. Like, people are just going to watch yeah. it at home. But, yeah, I, I just... I So, any, I just heard it was, like, a lot of fun and, like, the super energetic, exciting thing... Um, and I was a little let down. Uh, I didn't love this movie, but I know that's like, I feel like an outsider here because I feel like a lot of people really like it. So I'm curious, Jeff, yeah. did you, what did you think of this movie? I, I'm in the middle, I think, mm -hmm. uh, of you and the, and the other sentiment you're expressing. I think I liked it, but I didn't love it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, are you yeah, like... Yeah, it, it kind of... Yeah, sorry. I was just gonna. Are you like a big musical guy? Like, do you have any strong feelings about musicals? so? I'm. I almost never watch musicals. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I have seen. I did see Hamilton when it was in, playing in Chicago, like pretty early mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And I saw like you know my with my family. I watched like on Disney Plus the the filmed version of it, which is just the same mm -hmm. thing, but. Okay. I never watched with a bunch that. of cameras. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird because it's just one of the, you know, earlier, like, actual Recordings, stage yeah. shows with an audience. And they just, like, kind of, it just feels like you're sitting in a bunch of different seats. They just cut around. That's <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I, I didn't know what the big difference was between. I thought they made it, like, super cinematic, but apparently it's just. It, it's, like, in the, it's as much cinematic as you could make it yeah. where it's still yeah. a show attended by an audience. Understood, understood. Um. Yeah, but it's because also you know when you're doing that you can't like interfere I guess with the audience watching. Right. It. They <laughs> you can't just have like a camera guy standing in the middle of the stage. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Mm. But yeah. Okay. So I don't know. I'm still like conflicted with how much I think I like this film. Now I think Lin Manuel Miranda is amazing at crafting songs that you're like that are fun to listen to. Yeah. And, like watch people dance around. Mm hmm. He knows so I think how to like, that that translates. He gets it yeah, stuck in your from, ear. Exactly like, from him. Even even when the songs, the lyrics are stupid, it's just the beats are so catchy. Mm -hmm. There's one where people are just talking about like fireworks for like three minutes straight. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, I'm into it. Right. I was gonna bring up the fireworks scene, but I'll yeah. wait for that. Um Yeah, it's weird because like the the big opening number, which is the song in the heights, um, mm -hmm. which is at the very beginning of this movie. It's like that's the one that was stuck in my head all day, um, and that was like I I don't know how that's possible because that was at the beginning and then we witnessed all this other shit. But for some reason that one I was just like in the heights. Yeah. Um, it's probably because he just repeats the the line See, over and that's over. That's the science. <laughs> that is the, the science. science. Say repeat the chorus as much as possible. Yeah. And people like the song more. There's the like ninety six thousand song. Where you, mm -hmm. I mean, in a lot of these, I think because it's rapping, he is able to get across a lot of like plot points very efficiently and smoothly. But in that one, the main character, they're having like an entirely different conversation and he keeps going 96,000. <laughs> it's, it's like they're past that point in the song. <laughs> yeah. But, Dude, he's hung up on it. He's hung know? up on it. It's a crazy number. Um, I love the songs though, where. <laughs> 
people are like the songs start with two people arguing but yeah. they're arguing by singing like perfectly yeah yeah i know the so one it's, it's like my brain doesn't understand like am i watching two people arguing but they're like synchronizing with like beautiful voices yeah it's very bizarre what do you mean um <laughs> <laughs> i yeah i i like musicals like that um where it's mm-hmm. basically like an opera where everything's sung um I don't know. I just I, I I like I will not uh I there's like a lot of talent behind Lynn, obviously. The man's yeah. good at what he does. I just don't think I'm into that style that he's doing a whole lot. <laughs> but I think yeah, that's his just style me. I'm in such a minority here. Uh, yeah, his style is you know, it's so clearly trying to be as universally loved as possible. Yeah. It's the yeah. most approachable possible version of what he's making mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and i always feel like every since he's like writing all these songs every like male singer sounds like they're just lin-manuel miranda they do that that's like yeah. my biggest issue with this film is that the way the word choices and the way that they like express ideas within the songs as all these different singers still sound yeah. like they're lin-manuel miranda well they like fully recasted it because he was like wasn't he the lead in the original musical or something? I'm sure he yeah. was. That's like his thing. And they yeah. were going to make him the lead in this, but they like recast it and stuff. They're, they're like, oh, because they were going to make this film like 10 years ago, I think. Really? Yeah. I think it just got like pushed back and stuff. Wow. Um, That's that but, backstory. Yeah. He, now he's old, so it mm-hmm. wouldn't really have made sense. But he still somehow for... found a way to put himself in the movie. Oh, for in sure. In this part sure. that was like way he keeps popping yeah. up because i thought he was just gonna be like this fun cameo in the opening scene i was like okay yeah that's lynn and then he has his own song at some point and then he's at the beach at the end i'm like you are not yeah. that important <laughs> his, his song is so funny because <laughs> he's Softies. just selling shaved ice or yeah and he's just talking about how hot it is and then he's just singing all the flavors yeah he's like i have lemon i have mango <laughs> I want a musical all about that guy and his yeah. life, you know. Um, but, yeah. I, I Okay, we'll, we'll stop beating around the bush. This movie's, like, very long. Uh, it's which, super long. It's two and a half hours long, just about. Yeah. Which, in my opinion, here's the... Like, I know, like, a lot of uh, movies, they like to, like, indulge a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. And sometimes that I can forgive them. Other times I'm like, you could have cut a lot of that. In this movie, I'm like, oh my god, it could have been like, realistically, could have been like 45 minutes long. I mean, that's a stretch. I, I keep the little that's, short. That's I, a little you wouldn't st- have a lot of songs in that musical. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I think the thing is, when musicals like stop, uh, I think musicals that work the most for me are when like a bunch of things are being like established in those songs. Like, it doesn't feel like a collection of songs, rather, like. A movie mm. happening through music. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, and th- this is definitely one that does that in a lot of parts. Like I said, I think that's why the rapping works is because it can be played off as like dialogue most of the time. Um, yeah. But I'm also just like, it gets like, v- it, almost every song gets like so redundant so fast. In my oh, opinion. for sure. Because like the lyrics just repeat. A they just keep going and going ton. and going. Um, yeah I mean the thing that I think I figured out with this and Hamilton is that they're the perfect films to watch with like your whole family yeah yeah because you can't really miss anything because it's just songs where they repeat one idea over and over again and also like it's fun to hear the songs you know it's still pretty good and then but at the end of the day I'm not like trying to hyper focus on this film yeah so I don't if someone talks during it I'm not like hey don't talk Mm -hmm. like it's it's a great film to sit because that's actually what I did was because uh, it's Father's Day here in the U S yeah and my like parents and I just sat on the couch and watched watch this in the Heights I'm like this was the perfect movie to just like chill and like watch on the couch see that's the thing I wanted to see this I maybe that also has something to do with my uh, underwhelming uh, experience with it was that I thought I was gonna see this in the theater with friends. Or, like, mm-hmm. with family or something. But apparently all my friends watched it with their families, like, the first night it came out. Uh, to a point where I was just all alone and was like... Did, wait, did you watch it in your apartment? I watched it in my apartment. 
by yourself? Yeah. Oh, that's the at worst like, way to watch it. At like it. noon. Um, that's almost weird, actually. Yeah, it was definitely. I was like, I feel like self conscious watching this with my neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> just, they're like, is that guy watching In the Heights at like noon? <laughs> <laughs> just in this apartment that's like half furnished. Yeah. Yeah. It was a really it, weird it's experience. One those, <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where I think I've never really thought about this before, but some films are are absolutely like enhanced by watching it with your family who might interrupt during the middle of it yeah and then there are some where that's like ridiculous like obviously you know watching blade runner where people keep talking would be awful yeah but watching but it's the opposite for in the heights (laughs) we're watching it by yourself is what makes it weird yep Yep. i was just like i it it was just a really weird time to watch that movie (laughs) so i i (laughs) Well, the alternative was going to the theater alone, which would have been yeah. a better experience, to be honest, being with Probably, some but that would have been of... funny if, if, like, a big group of people were all, like, excited to watch yep, it. Yep. And like, they're left. And they're like, is that guy watching this alone? They're like, is that Karsten from YouTube? And he's alone for this? <laughs> yeah. That, that would have been a great, like, Twitter photo someone would take. Karsten Rundquist alone watching, watching In, in the, the Heights. heights in it. At, once again, at, like, a 1 p.m. screening. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a large popcorn that's so embarrassing. You're like, wow, what? Like, wow, this guy really loves cinema. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was bad. I think that even weirder. You're gonna judge me for this. I feel like this morning at 11 a.m. I started Heat, uh, the three hour long Michael Mann. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I actually have a story about Heat. Yeah. <laughs> so. There was this podcast that people like asked me to do. It was people who were going to like college in in the UK. Yeah, and I was a guest on their podcast, and I was like, okay, what movie watch? And they're like, Heat, and I'm like, that's the longest movie. Um, and I did not budget my time well, so I only had about maybe two hours before this thing started because like something came up when I was gonna watch it. So I was like, I cannot watch all this movie. So I watched the first two, I thought of maybe like skimming through, but I'm like, uh, I'd rather just watch like the two hours straight. And then the last hour of it or so, I did not watch it. And I just had to pretend I watched it when I was on this podcast. Do they know this yet? Or They did not know that. And they, they never, they never knew. Have you ever finished the movie? I have not. Oh my because, God. Well, then they told me in the <laughs> podcast, I learned what happened. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah, that was a great scene. Great scene. <laughs> That is crazy. I was like, oh yeah, when they when they uh, when they turned up the heat, that was that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Got hot. Yeah, <laughs> that was um that is crazy. The last hour of that movie is the best part in my opinion. Not to be that guy, because I feel I always hate mm-hmm. when some guy is, tells me that. But like, it's gets well, really for good. Most movies, that's most of the that's movie. The case, yeah. <laughs> when when you're, <laughs> you most know, movies aren't three hours long. That's not as bad. I will. I I can't make fun of you for that. Yeah, because I left the the world premiere of Knives Out early uh, to go see the Lighthouse for the second time. <laughs> and okay, Ni- whoa, whoa, wait. Did did you leave because you didn't like it? No, I was loving it. I loved it a lot. And that's a movie where the whole point of the movie is to to it's watch the, the whole to thing, the watch the end to you see get the satisfying conclusion. Yeah, right. <laughs> I went to see a whodunit, the world premiere, where the whole cast, which is star-studded, like Chris Evans, Tony right. Collette, Daniel Craig, who had a Q&A afterwards, and I left it, so I didn't even get to see the Q&A, and I didn't did get you, to see whodunit. Did you come back to, you should have come back to the Q&A and asked Daniel Craig, so I, I actually walked out, who, who did it? So who happened? <laughs> what? Was, who happened? <laughs> who done it? Who's on first? Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's like one of my most embarrassing and regretful uh, experiences, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I guess what's nice about that, though, is that usually people's embarrassing moments aren't entirely self-inflicted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So at least you had, like, uh, agency in that. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I just look like, because it's like, also, every other screening I went to at that festival, it's like, there was always someone who walked out. Besides, I think, like, Parasite. No one walked out of that. But, yeah, no one walked out of Knives Out. Because it's like such a universally loved movie. It's so hard not to like yeah. that movie. So mm-hmm. I just like looked like this asshole 
walking out of the world premiere just and everyone was like oh he must fucking hate it <laughs> and there was probably and like was, one guy who realized it was <clears throat> karsten rundquist famous that was the other thing reviewer. yeah i was like i feel like because i was getting recognized a lot at that festival i was like god damn it someone's gonna fucking see me walking out of this my shitty and they're gonna be like oh shirt. karsten hates this movie yeah this was <sighs> such a humiliating moment dog i and it's like i was like walking it was like this big like pat it was like one of the fanciest venues there and it's like i'm walking down all these like carpeted stairs and like there's all these security guards and i'm just like i look so dumb right now leaving this this event um to go see a movie i already saw yeah. um but anyways in the heights um real quick last thing about knives out what's your over under on how many they're gonna make oh there's gonna it's i'm gonna say a trilogy it'll be a trilogy I don't think they're going to go past three or else people are going to get pissed, you know? Yeah, they're they going to take it. their knives out. T- <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to get stabbed by one of those knives. Um, yeah, maybe they'll stab you if you walk out at the premiere. Yeah, yeah. That's got to be your new bit, though. If you happen to make it to the world premiere of Knives Out 2, I, I have to leave you got to walk out. I got to leave early. That It's yeah. just so funny because it's like I left it early and because it was TIFF, I couldn't actually watch the ending for like another four months. So it was like four months of anticipation. Did you actually not ever like... I never knew, look, no. Look up who did it? No, I, I was like, I had to keep that like super under wraps. And That's awful. Honestly, I don't know if I could do that. Yeah, it was, it was pain. Because it's like, I didn't expect... I, that, that's the other thing. It's like, I didn't know the movie was going to be that good. It was the world premiere. Yeah. No one had seen it yet. So I was like, oh, this should be... Uh, this will be cool. And then it ended up being yep. like amazing, and I was like, "Fuck." Um, Anyways, in the heights. In the heights. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, what did you <clears throat> overall think of all of the songs? Like, I know we briefly touched on this, but we didn't talk about it as like a general. That's the thing. Topic. It's like there. Here's the thing. Again, I'm in the minority here. I think they're all like well produced, well structured, like really catchy, beautiful songs. There were like two of them that I would listen to outside of the movie, and it's yeah. the, okay. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, I was I just gonna it. say, in the heights, which is like a, everybody mm-hmm. loves the opening. Yeah, and then I really did like the pool scene. I thought that was fun, and yeah. it was like one of the few moments that I just I was getting like goosebumps and stuff. I was like, this is cool. This is yeah. Um, yeah. Now my family, like my mom and sister, were very into playing the Hamilton soundtrack yeah. all the time. Uh, they were one of those people that just got like way too into the Hamilton soundtrack. Yeah. And I think those songs are better to listen to than these songs. Totally. Like I would rather listen to that. And I think that's even more indicative of the fact that I think those are better songs because those, those are about such specific things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where theoretically the songs from this film, like in the Heights, should be a lot more like universal topics, yeah. right? They should yeah. be easier to listen to. Than songs about Alexander Hamilton, right? <laughs> but I just don't think that's the case. Like I just no. think the songs are are better. Yeah, in Hamilton, totally. I think the songs in Hamilton, they're just like they they have some like, yeah, you're right. Like I think it's because they're so specific or niche that like they have some charm to them. But in the Heights, mm-hmm. it's just like it's it's a Lin Manuel musical about this specific thing and it's like if, if you're gonna listen to a lin-manuel thing you might as well listen to hamilton which is like i don't know yeah yeah and and again it, it's like if you like hamilton you're gonna like this yeah yeah um, you might not love it as much but I, it, it's hard to really have strong opinions on this because no. like either you like what lin-manuel miranda <laughs> does or you don't yeah you know it, it's kind of like this is literally like hamilton but with a different but with subject and that's the thing i i'm just like i think this is everything lin-manuel did it's like yeah i agree it's like you either like it or you don't but as a movie i'm just like it's so it doesn't embrace i think most of the like the scale that Lin Manuel works on, like it's it's just yeah. not cool, and that's why it's like I only really liked the In the Heights opening and the pool scene because I was like, it feels like it's embracing the whole, the the large. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> think it exactly. I don't think it takes advantage of the fact that it's not a theatrical production. Yeah, as much as it could have. Exactly. Yeah, you know, where something like La La Land, I think, 
does that better. Totally. It feels bigger and it doesn't it doesn't feel like they just, you know, had a theatrical production that they just decided to film where this kind of <clears throat> does feel like that. It feels like they did as little thought about how it feels like they did the most obvious transfer of the material from a stage show to a filmed thing. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like the th- that's the other thing about La La Land is like it feel and most musicals that work really well as films. It's like the the scenes that aren't music um, feel very grounded in reality, which only enhances the musical scenes because it's like you you feel something for the characters in those scenes. Um, And every time there wasn't music in this movie, it felt just very uh, fake (laughs) and not just like on the nose with how they were acting. A hundred percent. And I think that's because theatrical acting is a lot more on the nose. Yeah. True. true, true, Um, true, true. So like in Hamilton, when his son dies, Mm -hmm. which this is not, this is a historical event. So I think people should know that happens. The way that Lin-Manuel Miranda cries in that is very reminiscent of the crying when they do like the close up of crying in this film. Yeah. Where it's just like this really weird theatrical acting of crying. And it, it, it really feels like they did not, it all attempt to make this not a, a theater yeah. play that's yeah. being filmed. It's not. It's not really a film. Exactly. Exactly. It's like a. It's a. It's a theatrical production that's just filmed not on a stage. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like there's nothing. Yeah. I don't know. There's also so many. Uh, that also translates. I feel like into the storytelling and structure of it because mm-hmm. there are like a billion characters here that they're trying to complete arcs for. Like, what's his name? The kid that works at the store with him, who is yeah. like a comic relief up until the last 20 minutes and is all of a sudden has this like arc that they have to figure out how to finish up. And I'm just, and that just happens yeah. to like most characters in the movie where I'm like, they did not need to try and cram all this in there because as a result, I don't really care about anyone besides, uh, what's her name? Vanessa, who worked at like the hair salon. I thought she was yeah, well that would developed, be a, but... Yeah, that would be a great soundbite for someone to take out of context. <laughs> I don't care about anyone except Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like this... But who's Vanessa? I, yeah, I, I don't know. I think... And I don't even think what I said before is necessarily a negative if that's what they were going for. Is yeah. A, a play that's filmed. Yeah. But I think that I have an issue with this weird like unfettered optimism in everything Lin-Manuel Miranda does that's I think you can never have real drama in any of the things I've seen by Lin-Manuel just because there's it doesn't feel like the emotions of the characters are fully grounded in reality because they're too optimistic about everything yeah all the time yeah He's de- like no one's ever having a bad day that feels like a bad day. It's like a bad day where they immediately break out into song and it feels weird. Right. Like the fireworks scene. Which- yeah. <laughs> and I think it's just hard to to have anything that feels grounded at all. Right. It's just mm-hmm. you're watching a bunch of things happen, but none of them, nothing feels real at any point in this. Yeah. Yeah. And again, at the end of the day, is that is that a problem with the film? I don't know. I think that's just maybe me having the wrong expectations for what this is. No, yeah. Because I think what this is is just people love listening to Lin Manuel Miranda produce songs and watching people dance around on a screen while having some very small tangential like character arc stuff happening during the songs. Yeah, yeah. And maybe that's all it's supposed to be. Well, that's the thing. It's like I I agree, but I'm also like a lot of this is on john m chu who just straight up feels like he didn't he was just on autopilot mode for this musical Mm -hmm. which i think he just kind of this movie reads like someone who assumes that uh it just it it will because of like how great the music is the emotions will come and as a result it just comes off like kind of like a commercial (laughs) like it does like hallmark or something i don't know for me i think john m chu did exactly what he was trying to do which is make something where there's no inherent flaw with it in terms of how well it will be perceived by the general public. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. That might not make sense. I said a lot of no, words I, mean, I probably didn't need to. I think I'm there. <laughs> I, I, I think it's just like made to be something that no one can point to a reason why they dislike it mm-hmm. rather than having, because it's just not specific, right? It's, 
it's tailored to be something everyone can feasibly like yeah yeah that's that's true which is why i like watching my family because i'm like everyone will probably have a good time Mm -hmm. with this even though at the end of the day it doesn't mean anything to me yeah yeah now i think the part that we haven't talked about yet that does have the ability to mean something to people is like the representation aspect Mm -hmm. yeah you know because obviously you know that's a completely different aspect now personally i think that you're never gonna reach the levels of representation that something like this could aspire to just because it's such a hokey lin-manuel miranda production yeah it feels more surface level to me because you're not really telling real stories you're telling these like bizarro versions of stories that are real yeah but the drama of the real version of these stories is nowhere to be found totally totally and the drama that there is is like not very it's just it's very on the surface i feel like Mm -hmm. and and i I can't like speak on this it's like i'm not i don't share this background but i'm just like it, it just felt like nothing i we didn't already know it just was like super right. again on the nose or on the surface uh for the sake of being like kind of i don't know i don't it felt more performative than it did uh whatever the opposite of that is yeah <laughs> I, I feel like i don't know it's something like you're maybe they're they're showing the stories rather than like actually telling them they're kind of just like pointing at things and be like this is sort of like what people in this community yeah, experience yeah but with lots of singing and n- nothing mm-hmm. bad happening yeah yeah um yeah i guess that's we could we could start wrapping it up um <laughs> yeah the fire i i guess i don't know it's a it's a weird movie it is a weird movie i that's the thing it's like I don't know. I I can't. I barely even feel like I can critique it as a movie. More it, instead, I I feel like I'm critiquing Lin Manuel when I'm critiquing it, which is like yeah, not a good place to be. <laughs> um, yeah. I just don't. Yeah. I, I think I just went into it misunderstanding what I was supposed to be watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and again, I want to say like obviously you know representation for and musicals i think are there's a lot, massive lack of representation mm-hmm. for you know so it's great that like something like this is made but i don't think it, it's making maybe the impact that it could but then again the reason it's popular is because lin-manuel miranda makes things that are for everyone yeah yeah so so it's this kind of catch-22 mm-hmm. yeah sorry if you can hear that it's sounds blasting music outside my they're doing in the heights outside of my room right now. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, cool. What are you What are you feeling for a, a score here? Uh, mm, you go first. I'm gonna say. Well, I gave it a two and a half. Uh, I Ooh. I know that's like very low. And my first yeah. instinct when I finished it was like, give it like a three and a half. Cause I was like, that was well produced. But yeah. I was like, I'm going to be honest with myself. I didn't really enjoy watching this. It was yeah. very dull and also kind of corny. And uh, yeah, super corny, super, corny, super long. Super long. I was just like, I'll probably never. The only thing that's going to stick with me for this is that In the Heights song. I'll have that stuck in my head. But that is, right. that's, that's it. Um, yeah, I. I think maybe I'll go three and a half just because for what I was doing, which is just watching it in the afternoon with my parents. Yeah. It's a good, it's good movie. movie for yeah. That, but it doesn't, I also, it doesn't. Yeah. I watched this alone at noon mm-hmm. uh, on a Friday. So that's <laughs> could have something yeah. to do with, did I watch it on a Friday or yet? Yeah. I think yesterday, yesterday I watched it anyways. Um, cool. Cool. Well, that's In the Heights. It is available on HBO Max and in theaters if you guys yeah. want to check it out. Your hair has changed dramatically during the course of this episode. Yeah. It's it's in a you weird... You got like a middle part almost I right know. Now. I don't know how that happened. It's like... But that's that's <laughs> not supposed to happen. I don't... Yeah, it was looking good at the beginning of the episode. I was Are you saying just, it's like, not of anymore? <laughs> I'm saying the middle part. There, that's good. That's, that's good. good. The middle good. part doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, the middle on part me. though was was kind of weird. Kind of weird. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I, well, the middle part can work. It's just your hair needs to be longer so that it like because right. there it was just like stopping here on each side. Yeah. 
yeah it didn't i remember i went into a uh to get my hair cut and i was like can you do the middle part thing this was like a month ago and she's like i know that's like really in but you can't do that i was like okay all right, all right thanks <laughs> she's like you can't you know it's not you it's like she's like you can't pull it off yeah like, but i got a skateboard I <laughs> i'm wearing a long sleeve under my short sleeve um yeah yeah like if anyone could pull it off it's me, it's me. um we'll hop into questions here uh finish things off this first one so to, real quick though time of day would not be saturday by yourself at noon definitely not at noon this is like a 7 p.m with a group of people <laughs> yeah uh yeah yeah um this first do you think you'll ever watch this movie again not for a while i i don't think so i don't think so it's not even that like it honestly it it's like i like musicals um, yeah. I'm just like this isn't my kind of musical, I guess. Yeah. Well, I, like for me, I would rather watch La La Land if I was going to watch something that's trying to be a film. And if yeah. I was trying to watch something, I just wanted to hear a bunch of songs. I'd rather watch Hamilton. Yeah, like the film yeah. version. Exactly. So it just it's worse than both of those things, and it's trying to be like in between both. Yeah. If anyone wants a good uh, musical recommendation, because I just watched one recently that was phenomenal. Uh, Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Uh, it's a good one. And that's okay, someone, basically an opera. Yeah, someone like messaged on Twitter that we should watch that for this podcast. Really? <laughs> yeah, someone's like, I just saw Karsten's rating. I mean, I'd be down. I, I think it's a phenomenal... It's an older one, but yeah. it's really good. Um, yeah, maybe we'll have to to do that. Like, Maybe not next week. Definitely because, not next week. You know. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll do that this year sometime. Maybe next week you'll finish Heat and we can talk about Heat. And it'll be the <laughs> second podcast you talk about Heat. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Um, let's see. Okay, the, this first one comes from $15 no. patron uh, Jacob Colness. Jacob Colness. And it is uh, recast any movie but keep one original actor and the rest of the ensemble has to be played by the Muppets. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that the ending of that question really threw me for a loop. <laughs> Thing is, I I knew the question, so that didn't. But I can imagine you hearing that for the first time. Yeah. Is, yeah. I was like already starting to think. Okay, I can like I keep like one actor. Yeah. And I recast everyone else, and I was like, oh wait, the rest the of them are Muppets now. Yeah. You know what? All right. Because it's on the mind, I'm gonna say Heat, and keep Al Pacino, <laughs> but everybody now, else is Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> That would, here, here's here is a choice that no one will have thought of, and it's kind of ingenious. Looney Tunes back in action, where you keep Brendan Fraser. <laughs> you're just you're just turning all the Looney Tunes into Muppets. It's like the same movie, basically. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. That's really good. So yeah, so yeah, you're... so you get Kermit instead of Bugs Bunny. Right. It's just like the same group, pretty much. But yeah. That's good. Although it'd be much more like a lot of less practical jokes being played, no. I think. Yeah. It'd be harder with, you know, puppets. Yeah. I don't know why I had to do this. We all knew what puppets were. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, puppets. puppets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when you want to make Kermit talk, you have to do this. Yeah. yeah. Annoying. Can um, you do a Kermit impression? Oh, yeah. Um. Hey, every- nope. All right. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> that okay that actually wasn't terrible i'm kermit the frog i didn't really like in the heights <laughs> <laughs> i can do an that al pacino impression. not terrible all right do that did you get to the part in the movie where he says great ass or where is that f- i think so He's like she had a great ass that's not a good impression um, oh no 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 that's a part i pretended i saw oh my god that's the best part of the movie <laughs> Yeah, because they talked about that, and I'm like, oh, yeah, of course I know. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the Dunkachino thing? Don't uh, no. tell me. Oh, my God. It's so good. Uh, Al Pacino a few years back did, like, this partnership with Dunkin' Donuts, and they do a rap. It's honestly a lot like a Lin-Manuel picture, <laughs> but <laughs> they do a rap where it comes into a Dunkachino, and they're like, uh, they're like Al Pacino and he's like I'm not Al anymore it's Dunk and then they do a rap where they're like what's my name Dunkachino it's a whole new game Dunkachino and there's like 
It's for Dunkin' Donuts. Um, yeah. You should look it up after this. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's that. Um, this next one comes from the subreddit. It's Tom Liked Beans, and it is a worst dining experience, like when you're on a night out and maybe the, that food's really late or it's undercooked. Um, you know, I like to imagine Tom Liked Beans had a terrible dining experience with beans. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason for that username. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have one? Uh, not honestly at the top of my head. I don't, I don't know why I didn't come. Yeah. I mean, okay. Uh, So I do have one. Okay. Uh, so, and I've said, I'm probably, I'm sure I've told some version of this story, um, before, but I, my brother went to the university of Wisconsin Mm -hmm. and his senior year was the first year I lived in Chicago. And so I went up to visit him for his 22nd birthday and we went to Chili's and I know I got story. food poisoning at Chili's <laughs> and then he had like a, you know, normal, like 22 year old birthday party then. So it was like everyone drinking and stuff. And I immediately just kept vomiting everywhere because I had food poisoning. Like by the time this party got around. Dude. Yeah. And so they all thought I was like a huge lightweight because after like one drink, I was throwing up everywhere. And then I would like follow him around to bars. And I, every time I got to a bar, I just would go to the bathroom and vomit. That's that's horrible. Yeah. That is but like- anyways, my brother wrote about this for the website he used to do like content for, and then he got sponsored by Chili's. <laughs> on your based on this story. But you were the one that. <laughs> yeah, but also like, it was also a negative. Yeah, story. why would they sponsor that? That's like I don't know, but they they've given him like they've given him like a skillet queso jacket, like bomber jacket. They've given him like hundreds of dollars of free gift cards. They gave him a Christmas sweater. Have you been back to Chili since this experience? Yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, yeah, yeah. Not not the Chili's in Madison, Wisconsin, right, though. But yeah, that that one's cursed. Um, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I guess like food poisoning is where you go for this answer. I got food poisoning yeah. somewhere in L.A. in Echo Park, and. Uh, yeah, I, I rode home in silence the whole time in pain, and then as soon as I got yeah. home, just you know, we know the rest of the story. Just <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. This uh, this yeah, there there was some echoing happening in the toilet in bowl. your in your to- yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> the toilet bowl uh, was the echo park. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. My that was, tar- that was the La Brea tar pit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is. <laughs> This is the most disgusting thing we've ever said <laughs> on this podcast. The um, I'm sorry for everyone who's about to fall asleep. That red line we've tunnel your night. is called Sunset Boulevard because <laughs> sunset is yellow. That's not funny. Um, no, I, I <clears> thought <throat> it was gonna be, and I started laughing. And then it, and then it, it was, just it just wasn't that good. Um, yeah, I was like, okay, this idea is funny. This idea is and funny, then like, and then he uh, kind of fumbled mm, it. Um, yeah, what is going on? They're lighting off fireworks. I heard that. Yeah, I, that was, there's a lot of fireworks happened. in this neighborhood. I'm not gonna lie, which just like in the the film. Yeah, which it's like <laughs> they were like light up the sky, and <laughs> fireworks are like the least efficient way of doing that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like, know. This it's is... like you're using tons of gunpowder <laughs> to give you like two seconds of light. I'm like this is so. Anyways, um, also, did they ever explain how the kids got the, all those fireworks? And I know just they just had them. At their disposal. I'm like, if you're using I, matches, like, use those for, like, candles. Yeah. Now, I got to be honest. I think what they're implying is that those kids caused the blackout. Because <laughs> why else would they have immediately had fireworks ready to yeah. go? I think they cut power to the entire part of the city and then let up a bunch of fireworks. There's a whole B-plot going on in the Heights. Yeah. Yep. Um, this next one comes from Feudy, and it is, what are your favorite album covers? Um. So oh, it is a tough one off the top of my head. Um, yeah, uh, one of mine just growing up that I always loved was um, the the first album by Oasis because I just loved Oasis yeah. when I was like a teenager. Yeah. Uh, where it's just like all of them sitting in a room and one of them's like laying on the ground. I don't know. It's just like it's an iconic. Yeah, yeah. Cover. I like all the Gorillas covers. I think Gorillas make really cool covers. Um, you know that the guy behind Gorillas was 
like Damon Owl. Yeah, 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 something. yeah. Uh, he uh was the biggest Britpop rival to Oasis. Really? Because his, his yeah, he was in Blur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were the two like That's that funny. In, the, in the English press were like, because Blur was like the smart person band, and Oasis was like the the working class band. That's funny. That's funny. Damn, I didn't know they were like the same time. I'm not cut up on yeah. my. Oh yeah, they were like giant rivals. Damn. I think Gorillaz outshined Oasis. No offense. Well, he was in Blur at the time, but yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I will say that definitely more like cutting edge staying power for, you know, with the Gorillaz project yeah. happening. Uh, but Oasis at the peak was definitely bigger than Blur. For sure. For sure. I think that was a spicy situation to get into because I'm a diehard Gorillaz fan and you're mm-hmm. a diehard Oasis fan. So yeah. it's kind of. Yeah. Um, this. Oh, yeah. also, my other. Yeah, we just wait till I make you watch the Oasis documentary. I know. For we, this. we haven't <laughs> done that yet. <laughs> um, my other pick is Aphex Twins' album, I Care Because You Do. It's a, it's a really creepy album cover, but it's really. It's fun. Um, yeah. I never. I don't know. I've never. Because you, you've had album artwork on your wall. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, those are really yeah. I like those ones a lot. The FK Twigs album is really cool, but I love album. Yeah, artwork. I like the idea of you doing that. I just have never gone through album artwork, especially cuz I'm you know, from the digital music mm, age. Yeah. So I I didn't, never put as much emphasis on owning physical albums. Yeah. Because iTunes started like right at the time when I started getting into music, mm-hmm. so I never really owned that many physical Yeah album stuff well, one of my favorite things that i think is why i liked album art so much was c- that old thing that the music app on iphones used to do where if you tilt it horizontally you can slide through all the albums it was like a flow thing oh i remember that. it's like that always was so satisfying and made me yeah. like appreciate the album art a right. lot more i i remember because i used to when i would download illegally music off of LimeWire. Yep, yep. Uh, I remember that I, the ones that, like, you would usually not have artwork with mm-hmm. it, so I would go find the artwork and, like, put, put it, it on there. So, yep. that when you, so that it was, like, nice when you scrolled through it. Yep. I forgot about that. Different days. That that's like that seems like such an old thing now. It's never yeah, the, gonna... okay, the crazy thing about that is that you would be able to find so many, like, bootleg and deep cut things that now no one ever really searches for. Yeah, I think you could find them on YouTube now, but at least to like have on your own phone. Yeah, because now you it's like you just go on Spotify and like all their release stuff is available. And yeah, like, you know. But I used to have so many like deep cut like Oasis like demos and stuff yeah. that you couldn't find anywhere because I got them all on LimeWire. True, that's the thing. It's like yeah, because I used to be like really into like cheesy mashups that I would illegally download and yeah, but it's like no one like. Those are usually if I find one, I listen to it once on YouTube. I don't save it. I don't go through the trouble. Okay. Uh, there, I, there is one mashup that I actually go back to all the time because it's so good on YouTube. What is it? It's a mashup of Kids by MGMT and September. I know the one you're talking about. Yes, it's it's fantastic. the best mashup I've ever heard. Yep, that's the thing. Kids by MGMT is like such a good song that. All the mashups for it are just phenomenal, and yeah. that is a good example. I, I know the one you're talking about. Um, so check that out, anyone who's who's into that in the market for a good mashup. Yeah, who's <laughs> a mashup sounds like one of your weird, uh, you know, like Minnesota food things. <laughs> a mashup. It's when we put mashed potatoes upside down and then put corn on it. It's a, it's a classic dish. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah uh, uh do, do we have one more question we do not actually okay so that was all can, the questions we can get into the wrap up um yeah. what uh what movie are we talking about next week i feel like did we figure it out we did not figure it out no and Didn't do that i i will probably have to tweet it out we'll we'll figure something yeah out. i think so um so, so uh okay well i actually do have like a couple movies that are that we we never talked about and i've also just never seen okay that i that i haven't gotten around to yet so i have two things that are are we could go with okay i i still never seen first man oh my god <laughs> that's a deep cut even though it was like two yeah. years ago three years ago yeah or and also i haven't seen 1917 so do you feel like watching either of those 
Um, yeah. What if we just did... Let's do First Man. Let's do First Man. I'm down. I'd be down to rewatch it, yeah. Okay, cool. Next week, we're talking about the 2018 <laughs> film directed by Damien Chazelle, First Man. Uh, about... What's his name? Neil Armstrong. Um, yeah. Cool. Next, we'd like to read a review because, uh, you know... That's what we do. We, that's what we do here. That's just how we do that's it how here. how we do it. It's, it's how Carson and I, two good friends, mm-hmm. one of us currently in Florida, one in Chicago, we just, yep. we just read reviews. We're really, uh, we're really lacking in the review department, I'm not going to lie. I don't even know. I don't even... Uh, Jesus, it's like we I've read all these. Um so uh, now you know if you add a new review, it's going to we'll get read. read it. Yeah. Um I I don't think I've read this one. This one comes from Shamani 12345678909876543211 from the United Arab Emirates. Uh subject line is great, 5 stars and it reads Jeff is me and I am Jeff. Um and I am them and they are me. Yes. I mean, we could have read that before, but I don't remember it personally. I don't uh, either. So cool. Thank you, Shamini. Uh, and lastly, we'd like to shout out our patrons over at patreon.com slash carscast. Uh, were you about to say something? Or Yeah. Do, uh, one thing I realized is that at night, there's a neon sign that's like straight out the window of this room in my parents house yeah. that i can see very let's see like even going through the curtains i can see it uh-huh. and you know what it says it's for a motel and the motel is called sea chest <laughs> so i just see like this even through the curtains i just see the red outline where it just spells sea chest, sea chest. <laughs> that's that's great that's florida baby. anyways um, uh yeah yeah i uh the patreon um, if you guys are looking for a good way to support us, if you can't get enough of us, head on over to the Patreon, uh, where you can get exclusive bonus content, uh, early access to merch whenever we do that again, uh, Zoom hangouts, and shoutouts at the end of every episode, which we're about to do right now. Uh, those bonus episodes are coming, by the way. They're, it's it's just been a busy yeah. month for the boys, um, but we're going to get to them. Um, but without any further ado... Thank you, Antonio DeMarco, Ben Chow, Blake Root, Bo- Boy, Brandon Yu, Brock Schultz, Camilla, Chuck the Duck, Cruella for Best Picture, Daniel Cook, David Sir, uh, Eden, Gavin Henderson, Grant Gow, Harry Remedianakis, Haytham Khan, I Don't Live in Ohio, Iva, Jane Easton, Jacob Colness, John Van Hout, Jordan Hill, Judy S. KDT, Kaylee Patney, Liv Rob, Martin Def, Mary Lee Borslow, Meridian, uh, Monroe Page, Nora B. Parks, Riley Oss, Skylar Ermel, Sophia Arieta, Stella Perry, Super Kelly Fragilistic XB Aladocious, Smitty Warbin, Jaggerman Jensen, The Monopoly Man, Tom Likes Beans, Vegard Strom, Vera S., Wes Kinley, Xavier Fossier, Yusef A., and Zoe Hernandez McDonald. Uh, thank you. Thank you lads. to the Karst Cast patrons. Best group online, best community um yeah i agree I, yeah honestly you know it, it's a controversial topic but, but i agree we'll say it because no one else is um <laughs> well <laughs> uh that i that did not mean to come off mean but i i just a little um it came off mean uh um well anyways, anyways do you have anything else to say i have nothing else to say well i guess we'll catch you on the flip side i'll catch you on the flip side mm-hmm.